Good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us tonight for Meeting Places, Singing from Home Edition. My name is Rob Curtis. I'm the Artistic Director of Eucharisti Chamber Choir based in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Our Meeting Places series is all about bringing choral music together with other artists and other genres that we don't usually get to share the stage with. Last year, we collaborated with a virtuoso sarangi player. And this year, tonight, in fact, we were going to be collaborating with an astrophysicist uh, on a concert all about space. That concert isn't possible, but uh, we can still have a Meeting Places concert because for the past two months or so, about 15 of us have been meeting in a new place for the first time online. When we suspended our in-person activities back on March 12th, uh, it was just a few days before our second concert of the season, and we started tossing around a few different ideas on how to move forward. We really wanted to try something where we could still come together and interact and create together in real time. Uh, so we started out on a video call platform that everybody's been using, but we realized it couldn't deliver high quality audio from all of us at the same time, and the delay was really, really big. So we eventually found a software platform called Jamulus. So tonight we're going to present three pieces for you that have all been prepared using Jamulus, and I'd like to start by telling you a little bit about how it works. So this is what Jamulus looks like. This is the window that's on my screen right now. Uh, and you can see the row of names at the bottom. So the singers are all connected right now, and I'm going to go in and unmute them uh, and ask them all to say hi. Okay, go ahead, everyone. Hello. <laughs> so there's Ikarisi. You can't see them, but uh, I'm curious, Ikarisi, uh, did any of you actually dress up in uh, tuxedos or concert black for tonight? No. No? no. 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 Are you... Are you... My, my dirty garden clothes. <laughs> Is everybody wearing pants? That's the important question. Yes. Bases? Yes. Bases? Yeah, no, it would be the bases. All right, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mute them for a while here so that the bases can go put on some pants. Uh, and what you're looking at here in this window, sorry, bases, uh, each of these faders represents one singer. Uh, and they're all connected right now from their home. So moving these faders up and down, of course, it controls the volume of that singer in the mix. Uh, there's also a mute button to silence a channel and a solo button which uh, lets you hear only that singer. When they're singing, you're going to see a column of green and yellow lights that gives a visual indication of how loud their signal is. You can see that going up and down right now beside my name as I'm talking. Uh, and I can monitor my own level over on the left side of the screen there where it says input. So the singers can all hear each other almost in real time. Uh, the delay between one singer making a sound and everyone else hearing it varies from around 30 to 40 milliseconds to maybe around 250. Uh, and that depends on how fast each singer's internet connection is. Uh, and the singers have put a lot of work into tweaking their internet setups to try and get that delay down as much as they can. Um, I'll talk a bit more about our experiences later, but we're going to start the program by singing a piece for you live and in real time. Uh, this piece is called An Alleluia Super Round. It's by William Albright. And really, it's tailor-made for performing like this. It's made up of short, little melodic snippets that each singer is supposed to sing individually without synchronizing to anybody else. And they can repeat each one as many times as they want before they move on to the next one. So that makes it into a kind of a structured improvisation. He gives the singers some other guidelines to follow. Um, but it's really critical that each singer can hear everybody else because as they're making these decisions about what to repeat or um, you know how long to hold certain notes or certain silences, uh, they're making those decisions based on the collective sound they're hearing and what they think that needs at right in the moment. So it's the sort of piece that we couldn't record one person at a time. It's fundamentally collaborative and I think it shows off the pieces of this tool really well. As far as the music itself goes, uh, Albright puts the melodic cells in an order that I think tells a story, and I think it's a story that's really pertinent to what we're all experiencing right now. So it starts very quietly with lonely distant voices coming in one at a time, kind of calling out into the darkness, and eventually a fragment of a melody starts to emerge. We start to think we're in a nice major key, but all of a sudden the singers start dropping lower one by one, and it goes into a darker, a louder place. Um, the choir briefly uh, gets quieter again, more and more silence comes into the into the mix. They land on a unison note, and that's the midpoint. And from that point to the end, it just gets louder and louder. Albright starts adding some dissonance. There's one point where, where it's going to sound to you like half the choir is trying to resolve upward to one note, the other half is trying to resolve downward to another. It gets really determined, really insistent, and finally the choir lands on one unison note altogether. A very loud final note. Um, and that 
that kind of narrative arc coming together from distant separated voices uh, moving through frustration and dissonance but doing it with determination and insistence and finally arriving together again triumphantly i mean that's the story we're all a part of right now we're somewhere in the middle but we're looking forward to that time when we do get all back together and that'll be a real moment of triumph so with that in mind i found this piece to be just a really moving and pertinent piece um, I've performed it a few more times before, but this time it's taken on some special meaning. Uh, just really quickly before we start, uh, I'm going to mute my microphone from the stream, but the singers will be able to hear me. So you might notice me calling out some instructions uh, here and there as we go. You'll be able to see me moving the faders on the screen um, to change the mix as we move through the piece and through the various sections. So if you notice some activity on your screen as we go, that's what's happening. Uh, so the singers are all set up in their homes ready to go. So I'm going to turn on their microphones. Uh, we're going to get a pitch and we'll get started with Ikaristi's first ever online real-time performance. Here is an Alleluia Super Round.
There we go. That was a lot of fun. Um, this has really been a great experience, uh, discovering a brand new way that we can create music together. And we found some new possibilities too. One exercise that we tried in rehearsal was uh, for each singer to choose somebody else secretly to follow and then to listen only to their channel and improvise together with them. Um, Patrick, one of our bases, he coined the term stealth duet for that, which I really hope takes off. I think that's fantastic. Um, but that's been a real advantage that we can try out things like that. And with Jamulus, each, each singer's controls are just local to them. So you can change your mix without affecting what anyone else hears. So if you want to bring out certain voices, even if you want to just listen to a certain subset of singers for a while, you can do that. Um, so it's been a brand new way of listening. It's been a brand new way of improvising. Uh, and as a conductor, it's also really improved my own listening substantially because with no video, I can't rely on seeing physical clues from singers or relying on where a sound is coming from spatially. Uh, I have to know their voice and I've gotten a chance um, to, you know, to really get to know each singer's voice much, much better um, so that I can pick them out of the mix when we're rehearsing so that I can know which fader to move for the results that I want uh, when we're performing. So uh, that said, you know, this, um, this setup obviously raises some new challenges as well. Um, because we can't see each other, it's like we're rehearsing in a pitch black room. Uh, so this experience has really made us appreciate how much we rely on the visual element um, to communicate with each other as an ensemble, to see each other's body language, to be able to see each other's breathing or the shape of each other's mouths. Uh, we don't have that, so we've had to learn some new techniques and learn to listen in different ways in order to make it work. Uh, we've also had to collectively and individually um, put a lot of time into improving our network connections and our audio setups uh, in order to get the best sound quality that we can. So why do it this way instead of putting together uh, like a virtual choir kind of thing where everybody just records their own piece or their own part individually and then we edit it together later? Uh, well, one huge benefit of doing it live is, or hearing each other live, is that in hearing each other, it informs how we make all those subtle musical decisions that make a performance really meaningful. Uh, you know, we can pick up on what each other are doing um, emotionally and artistically, and I think it ends up being a more sensitive performance, even if we give up a little bit of precision. Um, but for me, anyway, the biggest benefit has been that it still allows us to get together every Tuesday um, as a group in order to, um, you know, to continue to create together. Uh, choral music is fundamentally a group activity and getting together with these fantastic people every week is a big part of what has helped me get through the challenges of these past few months. Uh, for the, um, for the next piece of music, we pre-recorded it live over Jamulus two weeks ago. Uh, I wanted to showcase what's possible with a little bit of post-processing. Jamulus uh, actually records high quality wave files of every singer's individual stream during a session, which means that it's possible to go in afterwards and get rid of some of the noise inherent to sending audio from home over the internet. So uh, you can also adjust the mix to compensate for people having different microphones and uh, being in different spaces. Uh, so I didn't do too much to this recording. I synced up the individual tracks a little bit better. I took out the background noise. I adjusted everyone's volume. I added a little bit of reverb as well to account for the acoustically dry spaces that many of us are singing from. And I also played with the stereo image a little bit. Um, since this is a piece that we'd probably sing in a, a big circle or a larger formation anyway around the audience if you were here with us in person. So uh, if you're listening with just one earbud, put the other one in or you're gonna miss uh, some of the sound. This piece is Jerusalem by Michael McGlynn. It's a really haunting song about longing for the joys of paradise to overcome the sorrows of today. And uh, in a lot of ways, it really speaks to us right now. Um, the refrain that you'll hear several times is, Jerusalem, our happy home, uh, when shall we come to thee? When shall our sorrow have an end? Thy joy, when shall we see? And the verses talk about all the wonderful things to look forward to in paradise. So fruit trees that are always in bloom, days of joy, an end to tears, singing in harmony with everybody. We're longing for a different kind of Jerusalem right now. We're longing for the day when we can be back together as a choir and when we can all be back together with our family and friends. Um, and so this has really spoken to us, I think, as we've been preparing it. It's another piece that really needs to be done live too. Uh, from the second chorus on, each singer does perform the chorus independently, 
but they have to time each phrase such that it starts in between two other specific singers entries uh, and then there's the improvisation side of it as well that they're making decisions based on what they're hearing around them uh, we've put together a series of choir photos to show you during the piece because singing together again is the Jerusalem that we're longing to get back to so in the middle you'll also see some pictures of our choirs singing at home setups so I'm just going to take a second to get that started and you'll hear Jerusalem by Michael McGlynn
Before we go on, I just want to say a few thank yous. Uh, first of all, to the rights holders for tonight's music, that's Carl Fisher Music, Michael McGlynn, and Cypress Choral Music. Uh, they all worked with us to help secure mechanical rights to be able to live stream these, and they were very generous in uh, reducing their usual rates. So we thank them very much. Uh, also, DigitalOcean, who hosted for free the Jamulus server that we uh, initially used to test our setups. Uh, and Adam Christensen, who's a bass in our choir, who is hosting our Jamulus server from his home. Uh, thanks also to all of our singers, those who have been able to participate in this project uh, and who spent a lot of time and energy figuring out how to do this, uh, and to the entire choir, uh, who are a fantastic and supportive community. We missed being all together as a choir, and we're looking forward to finding ways to keep creating together going forward. We have one more piece for you. I wanted to also experiment with a piece that does require coordination, uh, where everybody needs to keep synchronized to a beat. So we ended up doing this with a click track. Uh, I played a, a metronome into my microphone, and everyone made sure they were singing along with the click in their ear, even if the other singer sounded delays, uh, delayed, which is a big challenge, because often that means you're singing, it sounds to you like you're singing first, and the rest of the choir is playing catch up. Uh, we found it is actually even possible to do it on this platform without a click, uh, but it's even more challenging. Uh, you have to be careful you don't start following the rest of the choir, you just slow down and slow down and slow down. But with low latency, it is actually possible to sing together in real time. Uh, so that was a lot of fun as well. We pre-recorded this live on Jamulus. Uh, this was last week uh, with a click track. And after the fact, I took out the click, I synced up everybody's uh, track, cleaned up some of the background noise, basically did the same thing to this one that I did to the uh, previous recording as well. The piece is Song for a Winter's Night by Gordon Lightfoot. Uh, this is a choral arrangement by Robin Salkeld. Lightfoot actually wrote this piece during a summer evening, uh, during a thunderstorm. He was on tour in Cleveland and he was really missing his wife. Um, you'll see some pictures of uh, pandemic life and social distancing just to kind of show during the song, it's a way of reflecting on what it is that we're, we're longing to overcome. And if you know some of our choir members past or present, you might see a few familiar faces in there too. Uh, I'm going to take a minute and I'll get that started for us in just a sec.
So thanks everybody for watching today. Uh, the recording of tonight's stream is going to stay on our YouTube channel, so if you want to come back and listen or if you want to share the link with anybody else, please feel free. Um, we miss seeing you for you in person, and we hope that we can safely do so again soon. We're working on some exciting plans for the 2020-2021 season uh, with some innovative ideas ready for a season like no other. Um, maybe we'll do more live performance online. Maybe we have some other tricks up our sleeves. Uh, but please feel free to reach out to us to let us know what you thought of tonight's performance, any ideas you have for next season. If there are any other groups out there that are thinking of using Jamulus, we're happy to share some of the things that we've learned over the course of these last couple of months. Uh, we'll be in touch with our usual email list over the summer as well to let you know what we'll be working on in the fall. So stay healthy and safe. We look forward to when we can sing for you in person again. Thanks for supporting Eucharisti, and we hope to see you all soon. Night.